Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, illustrious, illustrious, beautiful, beautiful family. And I mean the human family. You know, y'all, I um I engaged in a conversation with some folks on yesterday that it really allowed me to understand and it allowed me to really, really um, think about just how important spiritual development is. Not a po not not just your ca- uh, carnal knowledge, um, and the things that and dogma that you have been trained to say and believe, or because of your own ignorance. I really, really, really. Um, uh, first of all, I'm saying I'm glad I'm not in that space anymore on a lot of things because I too was extremely ignorant when it came to a lot of issues and I believed the dogma and I let it manifest in my life, whether it made me a hypocrite or whatever. The bottom line is, I want to talk about sex, baby. I want to talk about you and me, baby. Let me say something to all of y'all who talk so much about the hidden agenda and about uh, whether black people were were involved in same-sex relationships or gay or homosexuality, any label and title and any of that that you put on one's sexuality, I want you to know that there's a conversation that goes a lot deeper than the conversation that we're having. Okay, and that conversation is who are people and what do you do with the people that are born in between the either or? What do you do with individuals who are done? Because I want to know, because usually what happens is because we need things to be wrapped up in a bowl, um, neatly packaged for our consumption. The cold, hard truth of a lot of issues and matters we aren't able to filter. We aren't able to accept. And then what happens then is you have a society to who unleashes, uh, either unleashes all of his wrath on you, like white people do, do black people when we say, hey, look, you got your foot on my neck and I'm tired of it, you know. And they know they can't confront the ugliness of that situation. They begin to go crazy. Um, and I feel that that's the same thing with a lot of individuals, mostly black people, when they have to deal with sexuality and homosexuality. They actually, in my opinion, lose their minds. They lose their minds talking about what's right, what's wrong, who's right, who's wrong. Um, and what happens is they again, they forget all about the issues and the people in between because they want you to be either or. Well, I had a chance to spend a lot of hours with homophodites. And that's people who, for those of y'all who don't know, who are in between. And whether their society, the society or their parents have made them behave and accept and pledge allegiance to one side or the other, in, spiritually and internally and even physically, They might have not had that. Uh, they 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 shouldn't have had that authority to make that decision about these individuals' lives. In a lot of cases, there's a lot of cases that you had um, girls who were actually boys who had testicles inside their bodies. And they had a, um, a clitoris, which 
uh, was underdeveloped. But they didn't have a uterus. They didn't have a urethra. I mean, they didn't have a, um, you know, uh, a womb, basically. And by all intents and purposes, they were male. But they were made to live as female because the parents or the people that were caring for them could not understand or deal with who they were. Because now, either you're going to tell me that God made a mistake, because we're going to have to talk real about this. So either God made a mistake, um, and this X and Y chromosome thing is a lie, right? Um, that all that, that science and those genetics have no bearing on what Reverend Wright says or <laughs> no offense to Reverend Wright. I, was, I just used his name. Uh, Reverend Gilmo says about the homosexuals has no bearing on that. When I even look at my own personal life, most people I know that's in the same sex relationship or have been, you know, mo most of them have kids. Most of them have grandkids. So I don't know where these gay people are that's part of this agenda that's not supposed to reproduce um, because too many of them that I know have. And so that argument is so ridiculous to me that I have to move on even on that level. Now, when you start talking about stuff like um, Caitlyn Jenner, a.k.a. Bruce Jenner, who now wants to compete or who could have, who can now compete against women in sports, a lot of people that would like, and it's mostly just white males who get a chance to do whatever they want to do. I don't see any other gay group that's being allowed to do as much stuff as gay white men. They can do anything. They can be who they want to be. They can do whatever they want to do because they rule the world, right? So now they're trying to convince me that somebody like Kate, Caitlyn Jenner, who was an Olympic athlete, and because she turned herself into Caitlyn, should be able to compete with a biologically... Um, born woman and that somebody like Caitlin should be able to compete. Well, I think there's a, a, a governor in Virginia somewhere that says, hell, not, not, not on my watch. And there's a lot of people that don't like it. I don't have a problem with it simply because, like I said, there's too much uncharted territory that we're not willing to deal with than to let some white man that wants to beat women in whatever game that they have made up in their mind, it's okay to accept how you feel. And that's, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But then when you start coming over to the side where women who are physically weaker, women who are physically um, a little bit more challenged than you, and then you want to beat the brakes off of them, then that is all, in my opinion, based in insanity now. There's no more science in it, as far as I'm concerned. And I know this video is going to get flagged. I'm already sure of it. But I have to be honest. And I'm saying it out of love, because I don't not love you. But I'm saying you've gone too damn far. So I made this statement before, and I'm going to make it again. Uh, with that being said, it does not negate the fact that black people are some of the most homophobic, hypocritical people that you ever want to meet. Yes, we are. We love the Queen Choir Director. We love the uh, 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 flaming uh, uh, lead singer of a group or whatever. Or Little Richard. For that matter. Everybody knew Little Richard was gay. And I don't know if it has something to do with the time that it is now. That people are so flamboyant. 
And it's not that people are trying to silence you. It's just that some things are private and they should be left that way. And there are some people that's not going to accept your, um, I guess, idea that you can push off your behavior on other people no more than a heterosexual person should be able to push their uh, behavior off on people. I think it's truly un uh, unethical. I think it's truly um, a dismal sign of what society is. And then again, in my opinion, blame it and give credit to white men who have run in this society have run amok and who have had their way for so long that people are not even looking at the madness that they are producing in the country that they run, you know? So I don't want to spend too much time on that because that's not the premise of this conversation. The premise of this conversation is, and the thought process of this conversation is, once you have conversations with people who are in between, that's the gray area, they're not black nor white, and you still harbor the same homophobic um, rhetoric or regurgitating the same stuff that people say about gay people and all that, then I know that you're not a free and independent thinker. Um, when you start trying to load all this stuff up with a culture and who did what first and who didn't do anything. And you have no right to do that. <coughs> it doesn't mesh with science. It really doesn't. <coughs> the argument is weak and tired when you say that God made Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve so they could procreate because <clears throat> Excuse me, there are too many people in the same sex, I mean, in a heterosexual relationship who weren't able to bear children. So that kills that argument. From one of my uh, foster sisters to my aunt, um, a couple of my aunts, they weren't able to bear children for whatever reason. So were they less? women <coughs> than some of us who have the ignorant the argument is so ignorant because sexuality is more deeper than all of y'all think and if you're not willing to get to the science and stuff if you're really just going to keep regurgitating that stuff that your mama said or your grandmama said or the preacher said and uh, gay people this and Who's going to hell and all that kind of stuff. And you are so missing an opportunity to see deeper into life. You are so missing a grand opportunity to um, expand, expand your horizon scientifically, not emotionally, spiritually, not dogmatically intelligently you will be able to see things on a spiritual level and on a level that once you understand you'll realize that you can't explain the unexplainable you just can't and it does not mean that god is not in it because god produced it god ordained it to be so ordained it to be so And all I'm saying, people, is um, start looking underneath that thing. You know, everything don't sit out top, and it's, everything is not wrapped in a beautiful package in a beautiful boat. You're going to have to stop judging people by what you think and what the uh, majority of people say and become a free, independent thinker of your own because I will tell you one thing. That's for sure. And I bet my life on it. There are some people who are just outside of the realm. Who are underneath the gender that you try to assign for them. Because it's a gray area. And that 
and the explanation or or the definition that you're trying to give is for either or and maybe for those circumstances it's validated it's okay but for those gray areas in life the areas that science proves that it throws doubt in your theory from either or then you have to pay home you have to respect it you have to honor it or you or you will be in denial from it so with that being said that was it was one of the most interesting interesting learning pods for me and i hope and i challenge a lot of the family member to start looking at those gray areas and stop saying either or and look into some of those gray areas that you think is, is is what it is, but it ain't what it is. And then come back and give me a, an explanation for what you think about it. Cause I'm really interested in wanting to know. And, and, and I'd like for you to leave your comments below. Y'all tell me, what do you think about the um, either or syndrome? What do you think about the gray areas, people? Do you think there are gray areas in our lives that can't be explained, can't be um, uh, just uh, relegated to an either-or situation? Do you believe that? So, I'm going to back up now so I can hear your comment. And I'll see you in the next video. Family, wherever you are, I want you to know I love you. I want you to like and subscribe and I want you to share the video and maybe even pass it on with love. I'll see you in the next one.